You're listening to the PRO Media Network. The next level in entertainment. Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. You're now listening to the Sports Comas Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Welcome tonight on this podcast. This is podcast 137. 137. On a nice, magnificent night, we're recapping the one of the worst losses of the season. And I'm saying that besides the, what was that other ridiculous loss? The two Memphis losses, obviously. It's the second Sacramento. Memphis loss. The Sacramento Probably loss was the depressing. The New York loss in home, that was pretty bad mm-hmm. as well. The Dallas loss. They're very terrible. They hit all them three-pointers. Right. So um, that's that's another one, the Dallas loss. But anyway. Why y'all clapping for that? I like, we're going to give y'all... All the people that's joining us, a round of applause for joining the Pelican Post Game Report tonight. Thank you. Or today, excuse me, for today. So that's what they were clapping for. Right, right. So we give them a round of applause. Um, and tonight, like I said, we're gonna re- uh, today we're going to recap the Pelicans' 94-93 to loss to Atlanta in Atlanta. Pelicans was on a three-game winning streak coming off a major win over the Boston Celtics, knocking the Celtics off their seven-game winning streak. And ultimately, seemed poised, had me com- uh, completely fooled, to take a uh, to make a jump and start kind of putting some space between those wins and those losses. Wasn't going to be the case uh, against Atlanta, which they barely beat this team in the Smoothie King Center last month. Uh, well, I think it was in November by one point. So Atlanta was thinking about it. And it's the same Atlanta club that's feisty. They took care of San Antonio, beat the Spurs. But, of course, the Spurs had the excuse of not having their best player, Kawhi Leonard. What were your excuse, uh, New Orleans Pelicans? Well, guess what? They didn't have any. <laughs> you didn't have any excuses to lose into the worst team. Man, we didn't have Solomon Hill. Record-wise. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> The worst team they lost. Frank to the, Jackson still foot still hurt. Our phenomenal rookie in DC. Uh, and I, I didn't even introduce DC because I'm so thrilled off about this. DC is joining the Pelican Post Game Report tonight. Yeah, what it and do? Uh, we'd like to welcome him to the show as well. I appreciate uh, it. Also, uh, before we get off into that uh, that tangent, I was about to do. Uh, let's go down to the topics brought to you by the poshlifestyle.com www.theposhlifestyle that's life spell with a y l y f e style.com for all of your health needs water filter needs hair needs uh organic toothpaste needs shampoos organic shampoos uh healing crystal crystals uh, for the athletes out there healing magnetics the stuff like James Harden and Anthony Davis is known to wear to help uh, aid in uh, healing the body quite naturally and many other great and gorgeous items also downloadable music books everything check them out the posh lifestyle.com have you covered and of course you can go there and upon use the sports coma in the coupon section and receive a 10 percent discount on your overall per- purchase so we like to purchase so we like to give that to you as well so on today's show these are the topics. Anthony Davis uh, put up a eight-point game out of 38 minutes, two of eight shooting, uh, seven rebounds. Uh, totally wasn't AD. He was obviously tired. We'll go over that tired game. And why Elvin Gentry didn't dip into his bench to help the, and bring some of those bigs out. I don't know how many games it has been now that I just keep watching the box scores and seeing DMP'd which stands for did not play, <laughs> and then right next to it, it usually gives you a designation of whether it's injury or not. Sheik Diallo, DMP, coach's decision. Right. Omir Asik, DMP, coach's decision. They just flat out refused nah, to play these guys. we just going to go out there and run uh, with eight people instead of uh, 12 like everybody else. Right, they did nine. They gave Darius Miller 30 minutes. He got 17 points. Dante Played Cunningham 
played uh, some position at the four and a little bit, you know, at the four position to kind of spell. But then they'll rotate Cousins out, keep AD out, then uh, uh, have AD in the game. Then he gets tired, rotate AD out to the bench, put DeMarcus Cousins in the game. I'm just saying. It'd be a lot better if we could have them both on the court at the same time. I'm saying, man. (laughs) We got you're paying this guy Amir Asik ten million, eleven million dollars a year, and you just he just a just a big ass uh, paper uh, what you call it paperweight. paperweight. And Sheik Diallo, you might as well trade Sheik Diallo if you're not gonna play him. I don't understand. Sheik, Sheik Diallo, Diallo is a pretty decent little for, player. For, for the at least Sheik Diallo can give you eight or nine, ten minutes a game. The least you can do is use Amir Asik for ten minutes a game. Imagine Anthony Davis in this game if you took ten minutes. Off his time, could you possibly imagine him scoring quite possibly half his stat total to go on to win the game? But we'll yeah, get into yeah. that more. The Marcus Cousins, a uh, baby actions is. Uh, I didn't write the topic. Somebody handled it to me. <laughs> <laughs> they said because Big baby baby actions, and I not anticipate that to mean. Uh, waiting for the refs to save him. That's a bad habit that this, that DeMarcus Cousins constantly hit doing. My arm. Waiting for the referees to save him. A uh, uh, because forget the referees. And just play the damn game. Don't Why? even talk to them. He, he Don't even the, look at them. He a little bit off the same size, probably minus fifty pounds or so, man. He's supposed to be like Shaq, like and, just dominate, man. Like we I, we know you can do it. That's why it's so frustrating. Should, in, in the last shot, he had an opportunity. Got all the talent in the world, man, to win the game. He should have powered he, through the. I don't the know. It's like he think he, it, so. he think he a, a, a six foot four two guard sometimes, man. Uh, it's I don't just too, it's too much. It's, it's it's just too much crying, man. It's too much whining. And people are starting asking, you want some crackers with all that wine? So, I mean, I don't know what's going on here. And then we're going to talk about El Gentry, why he ain't dipping into that bench. And I'm talking about his bigs. He got two bigs on the bench that he won't play. You got Sheik Diallo, who plays at the four. You got Amir Asik that plays at the five. Those guys are not logging any minutes. We're going to discuss that. Uh, the Pelicans, Pelicans continue to mediocre ways after winning three straight. They lose to the worst team record-wise in the NBA. They should have beat this team. Should have right. beat this team. There's right. no excuse for this loss. After beating one of the best teams with the best record. And then come and lay a, 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 a oh, goose egg man. like this is, is totally preposterous. And we're going to talk about. Mental. It's a mental loss, man, because they, they kill lost by 19 yeah. points, man. There's no way you're supposed points. to lose. We're going to talk about this because usually really good teams have that killer instinct. I don't care how tired, tired you are, you're going to put that team away. They they milled around and allowed this team to gain some uh, strength anyway. They came back and took the game. Well, if, it seems so. that if AD doesn't have it and he ain't coming out with it that night, bro, you might as well chalk up a L. Yeah, obviously because DeMarcus Cousins is too busy uh, eating wine and drinking wine and, and uh, eating cheese and crackers <laughs> that he ain't too much worried about. But anyway, we're going to have the interviews on L Gentry and, uh, of course, Drew Holiday. And, of course, we're going to do our regular thing where we break down with stats, facts, breakdown, and interviews. Of course, that is the rundown for the Pelican post-game report for the night. Let's get right on to it. Uh, of course, you know, 94 to 93, the Pelicans lose. We just said our spiel during the rundown. A lot of this is due, if you look at the statistics, we don't have to get too deep. That's one of these games where we don't have to get too deep and talk about, well, what the bench points look like? Did the bench outscore their bench? We don't even have to go there <laughs> because the reality of the situation is if you want to know why the Pelicans lost this game, you can look at very one very st- one simple stat in particular, and you want to guess what that is? Free throws. Free throws. Free throws. And you know what they call them? They said free, free. You know what they, they they termed it free because when you go to the line, there's nobody in front of you to stop you from taking a shot. It's supposed to be the easiest shot in the NBA got, to have. They'd be having a referee stand in front of them sometimes. Maybe that's what it is. The stripes is kind of messing with their vision, something. But the Pelicans were 13 of 19 in this game. They lost the game by, by one point. I mean. Uh, crucial miss free throw late. They, Probably with like 13 seconds left. They 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 left six points on the court. This is something I just keep going over and over, leaving points on the floor. Free throws. If they would have made at least two free throws, more they would have won the game. I mean, it's just amazing. I don't have to get into Anthony Davis's numbers, uh, although we are. But besides that, let's listen to what uh, El- uh, Darius Miller picked up his slack, though. All the points that AD lost, Miller kind of picked up, man. Yeah. He did. He did. He, he added. He did. He's been playing very well. I like Miller. But the issue is, is with Anthony Davis, eight and points. I, was, I, was, I remember never speaking up for Miller. When Anthony Davis when we saw has him. eight points. Yeah, yeah, DC, keep, 
<laughs> Keep blowing your own horn, DC. Here's Elvin <laughs> Gentry, and we're going to see what horn he's blowing. Coach, you went up 19 early in the game, moving the basketball, doing the things that you'd been talking about. When did it go away and, and why, perhaps? Oh, I, I didn't think we had the uh, energy starting the third quarter that we had played with in the first half. Um, we started to slow down, started to hold the ball some. Uh, the ball movement was, wasn't there that we had in the first half. And then we had trouble scoring. I thought they did a much better job uh, defensively in the third quarter. They got him back in the game. And then, uh, you know, we didn't have enough plays at the end to finish the game. Coach, after the way you played early and, uh, and up against the end of the road trip, did it surprise you that it fell apart in the second half? Uh, yeah, it, it surprised me because I thought we'd play well. And, uh, you know, I thought we had put ourselves in a position, especially on the road, to uh, to win a game. And we just uh, couldn't make a shot and uh, uh, didn't do a very good job defensively of, of slowing them down. When they, we, they also started to make some threes. Uh, we gave them a couple open threes in the first half, but uh, too many in the, the second, I mean, in the third. Well, you know, some people say, well, they, it was a three-game away stand and they won two no, of no, the three. No, you was up. You was up by one with you were 13 seconds. Team by to 19 know. points. You were supposed to be up by two. And like you said, before that, you were, you were beating them by 19 points. You came out in the third quarter and scored 10 points. Come on, man. 10 points while Atlanta put up 26 in the so game. I think the people going to lay down. That's a scra- They're the worst team in the league st- uh, stat-wise, but that is a young, scrappy team, man. They did not lack in talent. That ultimately would kill them in the end because the Pelicans really kind of held they, their turnovers down. They got some down. fighters in Atlanta, man. It's a little fighting little team. They did. They beat San Antonio with Doc Weil in it. So, uh, like I said, then basically – uh, the Pelicans walk, walk in, march into this game. They shot 44% on the night against Atlanta's 41%. Might as well say 42%. Pel- uh, they made the same amount of three-pointers, 10, 10 each. The Pelicans, however, uh, didn't shoot well from the free throw line, 13 of 19 for 68%. The uh, Atlanta Hawks was 10 of 13 for 77%. 56 rebounds by the, the Pelicans to 50 by the Hawks. Uh, Pelicans were out, uh, out assisted by the Hawks, thirty-two to twenty-seven. Total turnovers. Pelicans had fourteen, giving up thirteen points. Atlanta had eleven, giving up fourteen points. Uh, the Atlanta won the fast break battle as well, nine to five. Thirty-six points. Atlanta beat the Pelicans in the paint, thirty-six to thirty-four. Even though I thought it's a two-point uh, difference with Atlanta, but still that shouldn't have happened. I mean, you got De- Anthony Davis and Demarcus Cousins. Atlanta has nobody. I mean, right. some, you can look at Collins and say, come on, he's no matchup against either one of those guys. But they win the points in the battle, uh, points in the paint battle by two. You know, it's just amazing to me, man, When we, we even if we flip the script and look at the box scores and we talk about the box scores. Andy Davis, 38 minutes on the floor, he can only put eight points together. When did Anthony Davis uh, become uh, Dante Cunningham? For one night, <laughs> I mean, and the reason why he played, when, he was when, exhausted uh, when they passed him the Space Jam ball. He <laughs> stole his, his talents. For well, let's night. talk about that before we get in the break. We're gonna play uh, Drew Holiday's interview, uh, probably on the other side of the break as we finish up on this game, and then we're gonna go That's in the, preview. Drew Holiday's been a bright spot. He had a pretty he good has. game. Yes, and we're gonna preview the uh, Memphis Grizzly game on the other side of the break uh, in the second segment as well. Uh, but let's get into this topic. Kick by Andy Davis having that. T- Excuse me, that terrible game. Eight points, uh, seven rebounds in 38 minutes, two of eight from the field. Uh, we attribute this to Anthony Davis be tired. Had big zone, Why man. didn't Ant- uh, Elvin Gentry play uh, some of his other big, Sheik Diallo or Amir Asik, to spell Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins together I so mean, we could perhaps to, have. To me, uh, obviously, he doesn't have faith in them for whatever reason. We, we can see here. He DMP'd. We can see here that Coach's those guys decision. can obviously give you something. I think if if not anything, they could take a little bit of the pounding off of AD uh, with some defense on the opposite end. You're talking about two bigs. Uh, Amir Ashik is a very good rebounder. Amir Ashik make Diallo 10, is, is a very Amir scrappy Asik player. Amir Ashik make almost, almost $11 million a year, but he is sitting on the bench all the time, and he's healthy. It makes no sense. Why isn't he not playing, D.C.? Makes no sense, and we have two Is bigs. Is in a doghouse? I, I would have to believe so, but we, we got two bigs what that did can Amira shoot. do to, to make Elvin Gentry get, upset? Get Crohn's? I don't know. Um, what, what else could it be? I mean, I mean uh, 
you, you, you should get at least, like you said, eight to ten minutes a game. I mean, that's two minutes a quarter. You can't. <laughs> I mean, you man, can't put him in for that little bit. Yeah, of time. I mean, at least three minutes of the game, even if you're losing. Or right. if you're winning big, he should at least be playing. At least you he put get, him in. You put him in when you're winning big, and so when crunch time come around, you know, AD, Demarcus Cousins, they're not t- so tired. And perhaps even if just to spell your bigs, which is a common sense move to me. That also, he maybe somebody would see him on a tr- you know another Man. team would see his value because he's playing. The boat themselves on that. I don't one. know. On that, I have a dream a long time ago. Anyway, that'll be. Uh, we'll we'll we finish. Keep on wishing, though. Everybody, can keep on wishing. Well, we're about to go into our first break. When we come back on the other side of the break, we'll finish up on our discussions, and then we'll preview the Pelicans and Memphis matchup as well. And play the Drew Holiday interview. All that on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Stay with us. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal. Covering everything Pelicans. Attention everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts. With statistical analysis from G-Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Uh, uh, What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle. Life spell with a Y. L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. Welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. We're breaking down the Atlanta and Pelican matchup as uh, the Hawks were able to take it from the Pelicans 94 to 93. Of course, the Hawks are the worst team statistical wise, record wise in the NBA 13 and 31. 9 and 12 at home, but the Pelicans allow the Hawks to snap their three game winning, a winning streak, and that was most unfortunate. Uh, going into our next topic, we're going to talk, uh, hit, hit you with this one topic, then here with Drew Holiday, have to think about this ridiculous loss. We're going to talk about DeMarcus Cousins. Of course, DeMarcus Cousins had an opportunity uh, to finish up this game um, on a higher note. Uh, I guess he got an opportunity to make a layup or a play at the end of the game, if you remember. And, of course, he could not power through the defender to get the ball up. It just kind of clinged off the side to 10. The the and through the whole for, for most of the season we we've seen exclusive to certain games where he seemed to be having a, a pretty decent game. The constant uh, discussion with the referees, the constant when he gets knocked down. Of course, he gets beat up, and I'm not gonna take nothing yeah, away from. He's probably him. one of the most abused. He gets beat league. up a lot, but boy, does he lead. He gets beat up a lot, but boy, <laughs> does he lead the league in whining. I mean, you have to, sometimes you got to say, you know what? The guy ain't going to make the call. I can't punch the guy in the ribs and say, hey, man, make the call or I'm going to kick your butt. Look, if he, you don't he, make the call. He's getting a little better. I remember when he used to like blatantly foul people and he'd be like, what? What did I do? <laughs> 
<laughs> he ain't doing that no more. Oh my goodness. But anyway, uh, waiting for the referees to save him in many regards, like that last play when he had opportunity to lay the ball up and he just like, well, you didn't call the foul. Man, I said, listen, man, I can't call every foul, man. You just got to learn to play well, through he, some of this he, madness. He so. hooked the player. He had his forearms as he was backing down. I'm not knocking him for pulling a move like that. If they let you get away with it, they're not going to call it. But you got to know after you did that, that once you get the ball and you go up, them people not, you just fouled that guy. Like, they're not going to call it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know that when you're going up for the shot. Uh. Uh, it's amazing, but uh, DeMarcus Cousins finished the game. He had 19 points, 14 rebounds, 7 assists, almost had a triple-double in 35 minutes. So the bigs, the big three played extended minutes. Davis with 38, 35 for Cousins. Drew Holiday, who were playing the second, had 37 minutes, 9 of 16, 2 of 4 from downtown, finished with 22 points Man, and a one-point win. So, I, I yes. remember Alvin Gentry saying he wanted to get uh, DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis minutes to, like, 29 minutes a game. <laughs> Am I the only one that remember that? No. It was like 28, 29 minutes a game. You remember that? Yeah, it looked, well, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. So, hey, that, that means uh, 38, he was 39 going to share minutes. some of those minutes with some of his backups, perhaps. <laughs> have more of a balanced rotation. Have maybe five, uh, uh, a nine, a ten uh, player rotation as opposed to having eight, nine guys and you're not resting your bigs like you're supposed to. Resting these guys after them playing a back to back against Boston, you got Atlanta. The key thing is you have to provide rest for these players. You run, He's just running them into the they ground. They should have got a ton of rest when we was up by 19. <laughs> well, let's look at let's listen to Drew Holiday. What his thoughts are uh, after this win? First Loss. Lord, and, uh, we didn't. I think they hit some pretty good shots, and <clears throat> a lot of time um, we got into the paint, made some shots that we made in the first half. We were making it in the second, uh, and, and they played hard. Uh, they usually come back on a lot of teams, so they played hard. You yeah. guys feeling pretty good in the first quarter, first half of the game? Huh? We feeling pretty good in the first half. Where are we? Going I mean, yeah, we're up 20. Did you like the kind of shots that you guys were getting in the third quarter? Or was it better? Oh, yeah. No, I, yeah. I mean, I think we had a mixture of both. Some of them were tough, but uh, a lot of them, I think, were wide open. A lot of them, I, th- I think, were, they were shots that we usually make, but uh, ended up being short or long or off, and um, there's no excuse for that. But, I mean, it's just tough, you know. Uh, up 20 on the road, you, you kind of want to take that home with you. That was Drew Holiday, and uh, you know Drew tries to explain away, but hey, man. Uh, other double-digit scores for the Pelicans in this game was, uh, of course, Darius Miller came off the bench, providing thirty minutes, seven of nine, three or four from downtown, at seventeen points. In the previous matchup against Atlanta, he had twenty-one points, so he loves playing against this team. And then Etwan Moore had twelve points on five of eight shooting. He was two of three from downtown in this matchup as well. So. Uh, top scores for Atlanta was the score of Kent Bazemore. 28 points for Kent Bazemore, 9 of 18 from uh, the field. He had 20 points, including the game-winning uh, three-point shot. That was the biggest points. Yeah, it, he just was feeling it against the Pelicans. Collins, the young uh, forward, was also playing well. He contributed 18 points. And even though the Pelicans made it a factor to shut down Dennis Schrader, their best player, he finished 4 of 16, 3 of 9 from downtown for 13 points. But what Schrader couldn't do with his scoring ability, he got it done passing the ball and make sure other guys helped him out, which he had 15 assists on uh, with 13 points. And then Ilya Sova finished with 15 points on the night as well, hitting a series of three-pointers that kept the game close as the Pelicans uh, lost that 19-point uh, advantage that they had on this uh, Hawk team to give them life to be able to win this game. Of course, going away from uh, the game, now we're going to focus more on some of the topics. DC, yo, we have a, a topic here about Gentry. Uh, is he going to make it the length of the season? I think L Gentry is going to make it the length of the season. You think so? I think so. I think he'll do just enough to get him in the playoffs. Should he? I don't think so. I think that, <laughs> I've, I mean, the team's winning right now. They're up, but... It's not like a, a, you know, it's like, it's not it's like. Very, I, it's it, not an exciting it's fifth not, place. Right, it's not. It's like. It, it, we're actually underachieving, man. With the Spurs, where yeah. they are, 
honestly, with the potential that this team has, maybe I'm I'm pushing a little bit. Maybe we should be contending for a third or fourth spot. I think we should so. be fighting right there with Minnesota. I think so. And that's the thing that really kind of makes me kind of upset about the whole deal and how terribly inconsistent the team is, is the fact that with they a don't fifth win. Spot and we're severely underachieving. You, I mean, do you see that? They don't beat the teams they're supposed to beat. They lose to Atlanta. They beat team the big teams. I have to keep saying that. They beat, how do you beat Boston and then come back the next day and lose to the worst team in the NBA? You got Boston. That's the top team in the East, right. record-wise. Right. Then you turn around and lose to the worst team in the East, <laughs> record-wise. That makes no sense. So That makes, that makes perfect question. sense to me. That that, that, that sums makes, up that season, man. That You've been calling them a Midland team they are for Midland. the long. That is the the quintessential definition of Midland. Like, you you beat the best of the best, and then you lose to the worst of the worst to put you right in the middle. <laughs> My question is, we talk, right, Midland, Medoka, same thing. My question is, where's the killer instinct? You know how some of these teams have a killer instinct where they'll put the team away. Now, I can't fault Anthony Davis for getting 18 I, points. I, I think Anthony, uh, Anthony Davis definitely has dead, a killer he was instinct. Damn, he was dead tired yeah. in this game. But what I'm asking is, when Anthony Davis wasn't there, you had Drew Holiday. He stepped up with his 22. You had Drew Holiday Darius Miller something. off the bench. You had even DeMarcus Cousins, DeMarcus Cousins was something. doing it. But, you know, like I said, they lost it pretty much. Rondo lost shows lost it from it. a mental standpoint. But the, he did. He wasn't out there when he was supposed Why to be Why isn't out there. Rondo out there at the end of the game? I don't know what's, what, what they're thinking here. I don't know what's going on. They have to make some adjustments. My thing is this. If, they, if, if we could take anything away from this game, and this will be uh, our final – uh, chat on it before we get into the Memphis preview is the fact that we've been getting away with these eight player rotations. You're playing teams that's playing 10 player rotations. Atlanta played 12 players. I mean, what's wrong with playing some more of these guys? I, I have to keep going back to because Amir Isaac makes 10 plus million dollars a year here. Right. Even if you think that he doesn't fit your team, you still have to play him so that he can at least accrue some kind of value when it looks like you're getting ready to trade him. If you can trade him, which you, you probably can can't unless point. you put draft picks with him to move him. The man got Crohn's. We, we, he gets a bunch of DMPs. He don't have any stats to back up the money. Like, who's okay. going to pick up a man? All right. Well, Unless you packaging him with a with a pick. I don't want to move away. future assets just to move a bad contract because my GM makes a dumbass decision. All I'm saying is this. If that's the the uh, commentary for Amir Asik, and I don't totally agree. I think he got his crones under control. I don't think, he's, Gentry, I don't think he's bad of a El, player. But did as, not as Elvin we, Gentry ask this uh, reporter, ask L Gentry? About Amir Asik during after the Boston win, remember that? Yeah. And he kind of called him out the blue, or was it the New York win? I think uh, it was the Boston win. Uh, <laughs> and he, that kind of uh, called. We, we got stretch like, when uh, teams have uh, stretch fours out there, and we can't. And Amir Asik can't guard a stretch four. I mean, so Amir Asik <laughs> can't get out there and play five minutes. So you mean the team? You mean this team never ran a traditional uh, center the whole game? <laughs> so why would my GM the whole sign, game? But why would my GM sign a guy that my coach can't put out there for even five minutes? <laughs> I don't understand. The man makes ten million a year. Well, this was actually uh, ten million uh, a year. Amir Asik, I think, came along when we had Monty Wood. Williams. Monty Williams had a totally different system oh, come on than now. Al Gentry. Come on now. I mean, we got to be real, man. Uh, but that, you, that's what it was. I hear what you're saying about the system stuff, but you mean, you mean to tell me that you can't put Amir Isaac in the game for at least five minutes a game? Yeah, I think when is the, the last time Amir I think Amir they Asik should put played? him in there for at least eight. When was the last time Amir Asik uh, played? I think I saw him two games ago. <laughs> <laughs> two games ago, I and think he got a little burned. He set for four or five games. He got a little burned two minutes man, ago. Uh, two on, games man. ago. Okay, man. if that's the if, if if okay, he can't move. All right, he can't move. That's basically what DC <laughs> telling me. And and Elvin Gentry saying the man can't move that. I well. say if you're not going to use him, like cut him. Like I'm I'm pretty sure you we can get somebody. Cut that man. Why not? Because of you the gonna dead, pay him anyway for because, nothing. Because of the dead money that you will accrue for cutting him, it's like in like twenty something million. You better look at that contract. But this is the thing. No, we, okay, we, we're wasting okay, it anyway. Okay, so I concede that. Let's say, for instance, <laughs> I agree with you on the Amir Isaac thing, which I don't. Let's say I give you that point. What is the excuse for Sheik Diallo? 
Why is oh, that's he not no playing? excuse for Sheik Diallo. I, I'm is high, he too slow? Is he I'm high on Sheik Diallo. I think Sheik Diallo can go to stretch four. Sheik Diallo can obviously get rebounds. He can get scrappy points, uh, offensive rebounds. Uh, he can get steals. He can get blocks. He's very energetic. He's, he's a hustler type player. I think he adds some energy to the defensive side of the team. Like, I don't know why they're not playing Sheik Diallo. That's the issue. I would rather see Sheik Diallo out there at times than Dante Cunningham. It just amazes me that that you have you have two guys, Sheik Diallo and Amir Asik. Those guys been on the team uh, for the last couple of years now. Amir Asik does not get any play. Sheik Diallo doesn't get any play. Those guys just basically high. Well, Amir Asik is the highest paid cheerleader in the NBA. <laughs> he just sits on the bench, and it's not his fault. He can't force the player. He can't put, pick L Gentry up by a scruff and say, look, I'm going to throw you over the scores table if you don't put me in the I game. Think, I think that's what Latrell Sprewell would have did. Elvin Gentry is, is – is, 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 you are responsible in many ways for this. why this team is so mediocre. A lot of times, Anthony Davidson, the team was – the bigs were playing out of their mind. They were just playing high levels of basketball the last few games. You can't run them into the ground like you're doing. You have to use the players that's on your team. Yeah, I think, Sheik uh, Diallo and Omir Isaac should at least be playing 10 minutes apiece a game right. to spare uh, uh, the Cousins and Davis. There now, was no I, I excuse for a center for that games, makes $10 million a year that don't play but every three or four games. There was no excuse for that. Right. If I was Tom Benson, I would be upset because that guy is really just, just getting nothing, just, just collecting checks for nothing. I think a game like the Celtics game, I could actually understand him not really getting minutes uh, against a premier team. I could see them up in Andy Davis and DeMarcus Cousins and minutes. But against these uh, lower-level teams, we always fall off in the fourth quarter, right? You know this, right? That's the same I thing. would think a coach the third that, can, that can see this, obviously you would put your two bigs out there to start the game. Once you get something going and you get a little lead, take them out. Take them out, try and rest them for as long as you can to save them for the fourth quarter or, or the middle of that third quarter when you know they're going to hit a curve. It happens almost every game. It does. So they run why, into a wall. Why, why won't you make an adjustment to yeah. have a, a, your best offensive setup out there at the time when you feel like they're going to run into a wall? I, but get this. I got the answer with, for that. With, I'm going to let you with, finish. With energy because they be out there sometimes and still run into a wall, but they tired. But you have them out there. Would you still? I mean, that, that just makes a lot of sense. I, I I try to take the best coach in the game to me, which would be uh, Greg Popovich. And I think, okay. He would we, use his bench. If we put Greg Popovich on our team, what would we be? And then I, I kind of compare Al Gentry to that. And I say a Greg Popovich team, uh, run team with oh, the Pelicans. seven wins better. I think more Maybe than eight. that. Yeah, at least. We'd probably be the number three team, you, the, you, number you, number three in the. You take David, Fis, right you now. take David Fisdale, who was fired by Memphis, <clears throat> and make him the head coach of the Pelicans. You are you will definitely be in a better position with that. Now, don't get me wrong, El Gentry is an excellent offensive mind, but the problem with this team I think is we should the make defense. him a good offensive really coordinator. Suffering. That's what I think we should right, do. Right, right, exactly. But let's move on to that. That's that's that's, that's get away from. But to answer that question about why won't you play your bigs? which Ashik Diallo and Amir Asik is because he doesn't have faith in them. That's what it is. Right. Because if you did, you would play him. If you don't have faith in Sheik Diallo, at least send his ass to the Gatorade League. Let him kind of get better. Don't just have him sitting there as a big-ass well, they've cheerleader. Done, they've done that, and I'm, I'm guessing maybe they, they figured that, that maybe that messed his confidence up or something. Yeah, but they don't you, hurt his You don't send him to that league, and then you're like, the hey, man, you're coming, you know, you're coming to the team uh, now. And he's like, oh, I'm going to play. And, yeah, you know, you and don't never play. There. Let's yeah. look. Let's 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 move ahead. You're destroying, you're destroying them, man. Memphis Grizzlies, the next team New Orleans Pelicans face on the twentieth, uh, seven o'clock in the Smoothie King Center. Of course, the Grizzlies. This will be the uh, third Four. game. This, this third game. This is the third game. Of course, the Grizzlies beat the Pelicans one hundred three to ninety one the first time around. Uh, then they beat them not too long ago, one hundred five to one hundred two. So that the what Grizzlies. What is it about these Grizzlies team? Man, they don't even don't, have the players that you Connelly's have. Connolly's not can't there, beat them. and you st- just it, I, I don't know. I don't understand. Um, Tyreek Evans then gave away our secrets. 
he couldn't give enough secrets <laughs> away for you to have Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins, Drew Holiday, your full staff are still losing to right. a team that is in disarray with a head well, coach, actually, a team that's just facing uh, ownership issues, uh, attendance issues. They all kind of stuff going on, but they still can beat the hell out of the Pelicans. They actually Let's preview good this game. against those guys, though. Let's preview the this big game. three. Yeah, well, still no, uh, it takes more Everybody than three Everybody else kind of fall off. So, there you go. Well, and when you play eight or nine guys and not play <laughs> your full staff. So, anyway, uh, the Pelicans the averaging lead in bench going, right? 110.8 a game while giving up 110.7. Uh, getting a little better there. The Memphis Grizzlies average 99 points a game and give up 102 points a game. Of course, they don't average 99 points a game when they play the Pelicans. They averaged, like they beat the Pelicans 103 the first game and 105 the second game. So they always go over the average when they play the Pelicans, thanks to that ridiculous defense. And they shoot 44% of, that's Memphis that way. The Pelicans shoot 49% of the game. Grizzlies are 40 rebounds a game. Pelicans are 43. Grizzlies 21 assists. Pelicans 26. Five blocks a game for the Grizz. Five for the Pelicans. Seven and a half steals a game. For both teams, the Memphis Grizzlies, believe it or not, are on a two-game winning streak. They beat the Knicks and the Lakers. They're currently on a two-game winning streak in five and five the last ten games. As, of course, the Pelicans lost that ridiculous game against Atlanta. They are now five and five over the last ten games, despite the three-game losing streak, which basically they are a Midland team. D.C., we're running out of time here. Make the pick on this game, please. Come on, man. You know what I'm going to pick. You're going to pick the Pelicans because the they Pelicans lost one. They should win. are going to win this game. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, they lost uh, the last two against Memphis. I can't see them dropping three. I'm pretty sure they're aware that they keep losing to Memphis. And I think they're sick of it. And after they lose a game, especially the way they did, they always come back on fire. Well, that'll do the show today. I'm also going to choose what DC chooses. Aha! The Pelicans they converted you. Huh? The Pelicans lose one, they win one. They'll be back on the other side. It's so it's such a shame. Anyway, thank y'all for listening. Like that. That's just what it is. Right. Thank y'all for listening to the Pelican uh, post game report today. You can contribute uh, to the show to help the uh, you know our platform at Patreon. Go to www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network. Support our sponsors, theposhlifestyle.com. That's www.theposhlifestyle, life spell with a Y, uh, L-Y-F-E style.com. And join our social media pages. If you're listening to us on YouTube, you can feel free to like us and subscribe as well. So thank you from me in D.C. Peace. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell die bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. 
Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. <laughs> 